Hi everyone, I'm Ella. And I'm Cedric. Back again for another week of all things Super Rugby. Cedric, do you want to run through what happened last weekend? Okay, so last week we had Canes and Moana. Bit of a, a close game for the Canes. Um, with the Canes winning that one 32 to 24, and I know they didn't have their best side. They still should have won that comfortably. Uh, and then we also had the Rebels versus the Chiefs. Chiefs just scraped through, winning that one 26 to 23. We didn't have the draw and the Reds. Drew got off for that one, uh, winning that game 28 to 19. The next game was a bit controversial towards the end, the Brumbies and the Crusaders. Yeah, that call was harsh, eh? Um, the Brumbies got off in that one, 31 to 24. Then our game of the week, my Blues versus Alice Highlanders. <laughs> oh, never in doubt, uh, the Blues won that one, 47, 47 to 13. And then our last game, the fourth in the Waratahs. Um, yeah, Waratahs hit rock bottom again. The force got up in that one, 27-7. So they were your round 13 as well. That was, yeah, the Waratahs have sunk right to the bottom of the table, just on the <laughs> Highlanders and the Blues. My friend and I, it was the AGM for the Auckland Highlanders fans, all four of us, and we were at the game. Me and my friend were like, got a good feeling about this game, you know. I feel like this could be it. 13, 14 at halftime. We were feeling great. And then just a complete blowout in the second half. So um, <laughs> have I ordered my Blues jersey yet? No, but this is, consider this my eating of humble pie. Um, yeah. Watch this, guys. The last episode, Ella will be rocking it. Ella I mean, look. She'll be wearing a Blues jersey. A Blues jersey, precisely. That that was the deal. Um, it's fine. It's okay. So... <laughs> In light of, I guess, everything that happened in Super Rugby last week, there have been a couple of big news stories that it would be remiss for us not to touch on. The first of which is the potential return of a certain man with the initials BB, spotted at Blues training this week, fresh off the plane from Japan, Bowden Barrett. Now, of course, this uh, opens up a lot of legal questions. Bowden Barrett is or was on sabbatical in japan so he's still contracted to new zealand rugby but he hasn't sort of been from my research what i understand seconded out to a super club as is their process so it sounds like the blues are asking questions of new zealand rugby and wanting Bowden barrett to be in the mix for them come knockout rugby as they chase that first full super rugby title since 2003 cedric are they (laughs) are they should they should new zealand rugby be letting Bowden Barrett into the competition at this late stage? Um, I think it'd be pretty unfair to let him play. I mean, if he wants to play, let him play. But the way the Blues are doing, we can win this with or without him. So I don't mind if he does play, but I think it's a, <laughs> a confidence oh. I have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it might be a bit unfair to bring him in now. Um, but yeah, that's just how I feel. Do you think they should let him play? Or? I, I agree that it's potentially unfair. I mean, I think it's it would be good for Bowden Barrett, right? He continues to get game time, particularly in the lead up to internationals, and he gets to show, I guess, more of his skill set against Super Rugby, a different lot of opposition compared to in Japan. Because I guess, in theory, it's not guaranteed that he's making the All Blacks, you know, new, select- new selectors, coaching team, etc. So he'd want to prove himself. Um, yeah, I think there's questions of it's potentially unfair. Obviously, Cole <laughs> Forbes and Harry Plummer are doing a pretty good job at the moment. Um, but how far are the Blues willing to go? You know, it's been a long time between drinks and st- um, in terms of Super Rugby titles. We're not counting what happened in 2021. Um, yeah, we're not counting that. No. So, you know, potentially, is it too good to turn down? Um, but yeah, I think it's potentially unfair and it probably opens up a lot of questions about would we then get players going on sabbatical, trying to do a Japan season and a super rugby season. And what does that mean for New Zealand contracts? Um, and I guess developing players who maybe are coming through the ranks, will that force them overseas? So big questions that people who are paid a lot more than us, um, are tasked with answering, but yeah, it would be wild to see him run out. Um, the other the other big story that broke overnight, poor Rob Penny got a 
grilling from the media, which I think <laughs> in front of the cameras he handled really well. But unfortunately, he got done by the hot mic uh, when he thought he was safe and got caught dropping a C-bomb on the journalists. What do you make of this whole uh, carry on and what this means for Rob Penny, who's clearly under a lot of pressure? Um, you could see, like, it was starting to get to a point where it was going to boil over. But like you said, he handled it really well. And, um, yeah, like, what can he say? Like, he understands, like, the standard the Crusaders have played at forever and then for the season for what it looks like now. Um, yeah, I understand his frustration and all the questions that were being asked. And, um, yeah, for him to drop it right at the end, um, yeah, it was kind of funny. Uh, but, yeah, I understand his frustration. So, like, I didn't mind it, to be honest, because yeah, being a coach, especially for that team, yeah, so much pressure on him. So, yeah. Yeah, I think we can understand the pressure we were talking before. Like, it's not one person that is responsible for a losing pattern, and particularly in a year where you've lost you know, your team was made up of some of the best players in the world and they've gone. So that is hard to recover from or to rebuild from. So I think, yeah, he's only human. And I guess that's why I kind of liked that this got caught. Like he is human. This shows that he's human. He's really frustrated and he finds it like personally tough to deal with as it as it should be. So, um, yeah, I think people need to ease up just a little bit. Um, but yeah, I thought this was really funny, <laughs> personally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good cackle all right well i guess we should talk about actual rugby we're heading into round 14 so this round and one more before we hit the playoffs baby first match is a goodie we've got the chiefs taking on the hurricanes oh my gosh so for me i think that key matchup is going to be the number eight it's Braden yose he is kind of the talk of the town this season everyone's like he's ready for an all blacks berth but he's coming up against potentially, depending, I guess, where Adi Savia plays, the incumbent number eight, Luke Jacobson. So I think that's going to be a big physical matchup. Both teams are probably looking to put out better displays than what they did last week. I'm on the Canes <laughs> train. I've said that it will be the Canes by five. Do you agree? Or are you leaning more towards the Chiefs? How do you see this playing out? So, funnily, funnily enough, the odds show the Chiefs are the favourites from what I can see. And I think I'm going to roll with the Chiefs on this one. Um, yeah, obviously, this is their first meeting this year. And I don't know what to expect. Both teams are playing really good footy, especially the Hurricanes. Um, I think the battle I'm most interested in is the back three. So, Kenny mm. Naholo, Ruben Love, Joshua Moby, Rashawn Stevenson. Uh, it's an Anana Suturo and uh, Imani Naro. I think that's going to be really interesting. The battle in the centers will be really good. Mm. Um, Anton Leonard Brown, Quincy Pyre, with Jordy Barrett, and Billy Proctor. He's put up his hand for All Black selection. I saw it the other day on the breakdown. Um, a lot of them had him in the squad, so mm. I think that will be really good. Um, yeah, and I think in terms of the both um, both packs, it's going to be such a good matchup. Like you said, you'll say with Jacobson. That's going to be a really good matchup to see. But I do have the Chiefs winning by five. So that's how I feel. Wow, we've both gone five either way. <laughs> so we'll have to reconvene next week to see how this plays out. It's kind of too close to call in many ways. But yeah, that's going to be such a cracker of a game on Friday night. Then we've got a little Australian matchup. The Brumbies versus the Rebels. Uh, the Brumbies, I would say, are flying high. They're the best Australian team going at the moment. However... There's nothing like a team literally on the brink of collapse to kind of motivate the players. You know, they've got maybe, I don't know how many weeks left. They're looking like they're making the playoffs, but you know, we're talking weeks in the lifespan of this club. Um, so I think they'll be putting everything on the line and I'm backing the Rebels to come through with this. I'm really <laughs> excited to see what happens with the respective fullbacks. We've got Tom Wright, who's been in incredible form that wild one hand show and go last week nuts um yes, yes 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 he's so good i never rated him usually but this season he's been great and then andrew calloway who's like the golden boy um uh, seemingly a shoe in for the wallabies 15s jerseys 15 jersey so that's my matchup that i'm looking forward to i've said rebels by just two points but i think they're going to do it oh um yeah we obviously obviously saw what happened last week with the Brumbies and Crusaders. 
bit of an odd ending there. Kind of felt sorry for the Crusaders in that one. And the Rebels actually did well against the Chiefs, um, obviously losing that one by three. But I think I'm on the same train as you. Um, I think the battle of Tom Wright versus Andrew Calloway will be very fun. Like you said, Tom Wright with that one-handed um, pass fake. And Calloway, like you said, he basically picks himself um, to be selected in that Wallaby squad. Um, and like you, I have the Rebels winning, but I have them winning by three. So I think it'll be a very tight contest. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, look at us. We're not. There's not much in it a lot of the time. Remember those early scores we were seeing, big blowouts, but now we're really consolidated down to these little tiny margins. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be a really good game. The next game, maybe the one that I wasn't so worried about this week, um, we're looking at Moana Pacifica taking on the Waratahs. It is a bottom of the table clash. However, Moana Pacifica can take a lot from last week. Might be too little too late, but maybe they're finding a bit of form um perhaps perhaps so i think if they could win this then i think they'd take a lot of confidence going into next week where they're playing the crusaders and that would be a historic win for them so i'm backing moana pacifica it's like i'm manifesting a win for them and i've said moana pacifica (laughs) by five that's me oh okay um i feel the same way i think if moana can get this win and they can because, like we said, the Waratahs have been struggling. They've hit rock bottom. None of us really saw it happening like that. Um, yeah, if they win this game, they'll definitely have a lot of confidence going into next week. Um, the matchups will be really good. Toala versus Nango, uh, Nwangani Tawazi at the back will be really fun. Um, both Inisi brothers, Lotu and Fine, mm. they've both been playing really well. Um, I think that'll be a really key matchup too. But like you, I have Moana winning. Um, it'll be really close. Um, I have them winning by five. So, yeah, that's how I feel. Okay, look at us go. <laughs> Twins. Twinnies, how do you think Mark Nwangani Tawase feels knowing that he's going to rugby league next season? Like, this is his last season in a Waratahs jersey and it's been terrible. Like, not him specifically, but just, like, morale so low, performance quality not there. That must be pretty tough to be like, this is what, how I'm signing off my Waratahs journey. Yeah, uh, yeah, it probably does feel pretty rough for him, but he's walking straight into a club that is like really successful. So I think, yeah, it won't last too long. And obviously, probably is a bit sad the Waratahs aren't doing the best. But once he's at the Roosters and the history that club has, always making the top eight, top four every year, it, he's going to do fine. So I think he's okay. Yeah. Do, is. Just educate me, because obviously Joey Manu is coming from the Roosters to rugby, right? And Mark Nwangui Nitawase is going from rugby to the Roosters. Is that like a straight swap? Like, would Mark Nwangui Nitawase be playing in a similar position to Joey Manu? Um, yeah, so Joey Manu plays centre or wing in rugby league. And I think when Mark goes over, he'll probably fill in that position. Um. But yeah, Dory Manu, I think when he comes to Union, I think he'll be playing centre or maybe mm-hmm. second five because he does have the skills. Um, He can cook and he, there's times he's played like first five, eight in league mm. or fullback. So yeah, I think it's kind of like a swap. So, yeah. Interesting. That's going to be so interesting <laughs> how they go respectively, knowing that they're kind of doing the thing the other was doing. Interesting. Okay. Sorry to the Waratahs. Sorry. <laughs> Someone's got to be the wooden spoon in this year. It's you. Sorry. Um, next matchup. What was previously one of the premier rivalries in um, New Zealand rugby, in Australasian rugby, in global rugby, the Crusaders versus the Blues. However, it doesn't have the same kind of bite when we've seen probably one of the biggest falls <laughs> from grace in sporting history. Um, like we mentioned earlier, no sign of Bowden Barrett yet. Um but potentially in a couple of weeks' time. This, in my eyes, could and should be a very epic battle of the front rows. We have some huge names lining up against each other. For the Blues, we've got Ofa Tuingafasi, who's just re-signed through to 2026, which I think that man's going to have... That's a long career. That man has been (laughs) going. That man has been going. So Ofa, um, Kurt Eklund, and Angus Tarval for the Blues... And then for the Crusaders, you've got Joe Moody, then you've got Cody Taylor and Fletcher Newell. That is 
you know, there's going to be some good scrums. There's going to be some good scrums, hopefully. Um, I think the games being played in Christchurch, you'd be silly to rule the Crusaders out. Uh, but And especially now they're probably going to be really rallying behind their coach because he's had a bit of a tough week. Uh, but given that they bet my beloved Highlanders last week, and it's probably the team smashed. to bet. <laughs> smashed. Um, I will be backing the Blues, and I think they will win by eight points. It pains me to say um, it. Not going to lie, I'm a lot more scared playing the Crusaders now than we did before, and especially now that it is in Christchurch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, like we spoke before, this team, this Crusaders team is still really good. Um, just a few key pieces, like you said, Monga, uh, Wylock, Barrett, Mo- um, Wanganuku, and then Will Jordan. These guys aren't playing, and that that takes a big hit to this team. But the battle I'm interested in seeing is the battle of the loose forwards. So I think Christian Leo Willy, uh, Colin Grace, and Ethan Blackadder versus Akira Ioane, Oscar Satutu, and Adrian Choke. No, Dalton Papali, but I think Adrian Choke will still do a good job. I think that'll be really interesting. So the battle of the four packs will be really good. Um, I have the Blues winning, but I think it'll be close. We just seem to always struggle when we are in Christchurch. Mm. I'm gonna say we win by seven. So Blues by seven. Okay. Yeah, are we doing? Is it gonna be Heritage jerseys this weekend? Surely. I think it might be. Yeah, yeah. I think Must be. be. They do look good, don't they? Like all of them. <laughs> them. So good. Okay. Then the next game, which I think has potential to be better than people expect is the Reds versus the Force. Because the Force bet the Reds last time. By all accounts, the Reds should be beating them. But Yes, yes, that game was shocking. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, wild. So I think the Reds, though, will be really hurting from that match against the Andrua last week, which I called, I told you. <laughs> I was really proud of myself for that one. But um, because that means that they're not in the top four. So the top four is locked in now. They've got home quarterfinals. The Reds are number five, which is a really crappy place to be um <laughs> so they'll be really pissed off i reckon and out for blood and that blood will be the force's blood unfortunately especially because they lost to them in round five <laughs> um the key matchup for me in the half backs half backs half backs tate mcdermott dermot nick white going at it two mouthy little halfbacks. <laughs> so many other words i could use um but yeah i think that's going to be a really good matchup i've said the reds by six because i think they're going to be fired up um, yeah, that was a matchup I was looking at too. I think McDermott versus Nick White. I know a lot of people don't like Nick White. <laughs> He's really chippy. Um, yeah, same as Tate McDermott. Um, I think the battle at 9 and 10 for both teams will, really, will be really fun. And like you said, the Force should have not beaten the Reds earlier. That was, for that month, that was the upset. Like, everyone was like, okay, what happened? Um, but like you said, the Reds the finished fifth. There's top four teams locked in. A home quarter final, and yeah, I think the Reds are out for blood too. So I have the Reds winning by five in that matchup. So yeah. that will be, I think that will be a goodie. Maybe the surprise game of the week, finishing things off. Um, the Highlanders looking to secure a top eight spot despite their losing record. Same for the Indrua. Um, they'll be playing under the roof in Dunedin, but it will still be cold, I imagine. Your guy, AJ <laughs> Faliafanga, is starting at 10 this week, which um, has been something you've been talking about. I think he's only had one other start this season. Is that right? Yeah, I think, yeah, just one other start. Way back. Um, Jonah Nardik is back for the Highlanders, but also for the Ndrua. Caleb Muntz is back, people, from his ACL that ended his Rugby World Cup 2023 experience before it had even started. The Wonder Kid on the bench for the Ndrua. I hope he gets some game time. I love watching him play. Um, Obviously, I am backing the Highlanders. Um, they have the Hurricanes next week, so I think they'll be really wanting to build into a really good performance for that. And the only way to be confident for a game against uh, the pain that is the Canes train is to win this week. So, <laughs> um, I've said Highlanders, and I've said by nine points, they're going to be on. I'm picking it. I'm manifesting. That is what is going to happen because I said so. <laughs> okay. Um, I just saw that Caleb Munson's back. Yeah, it was sad to see him go right before the World Cup started. And he was playing really good 42 for Fiji. Um, yeah, I think whenever you watch the draw play, especially when they play other Fijians, the guys like uh, Tava Tava Nawai, Ratamutu, uh, 
that to my Tavuki Nipins. And Jen and I, Ricky, I think this matchup will be a lot of fun. Um, unfortunately, Ella, I did have the draw winning. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it'll be really close, and I have the draw winning by three. So that's how I see this game turning out. Sorry to all you Highlanders fans and I love but the draw are taking that one. I think yep. you've picked the Highlanders once this season and they lost. You got burnt and that's okay. I understand. Being a <laughs> Hurricanes fan, uh, not Hurricanes, cheapers. Being a Highlanders fan, I think is quite similar to being a Warriors fan. You just get used to the pain. So <laughs> I know you know how it feels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. I do. I know how it feels. So, yeah. Okay, well, that wraps up round 14 we're getting towards the real business end of the season um obviously there's much to be said about a competition where you have <laughs> people with losing records making it to the playoffs but those are the hands the cards we've been dealt and we will deal with them perhaps we'll see an upset um i think the crusaders have to win this week to have any hope of making the top eight but it, i'll be surprised unlikely. yeah it's yeah it'll take a lot for them to try get into that top eight I reckon they need a big, long break, you know? Let's just... The season's done. You're not in the playoffs. You can all have a bit of time off. Just have a rest. Yeah, mentally recover from what has been a not fun season for you or your fans. (laughs) It's okay. It's okay. All right, well, tune in next week. (laughs) 